Over the past 12 months, two big game developers have fought for the title of which developer can piss off gamers the most? And of course I'm talking about Bethesda and Electronic Arts. But which one has done the most damage to their reputation? And which scandal is going to have the most long-term impact? Stay tuned and we'll find out. If you're feeling a bit behind on scandal, let me catch you up. A little over 12 months ago, Star Wars Battlefront 2 was released and was heavily criticized for being basically a pay-to-win mess, where you couldn't play any of the iconic Star Wars characters unless you sunk a bunch of time or cash into the game. By some accounts, the average player would need to spend around 3,000 hours playing Star Wars Battlefront 2 before they could get to play as, say, Darth Vader. And while that is particularly annoying, it gets worse. You could get around this time commitment by spending cash on loot boxes that, if you were lucky, would drop the upgrades you needed to go up character levels. Spending cash would greatly accelerate character development and bring those iconic characters more within the average player's grasp. And even worse than that, the upgrades you could pick up along the way from loot boxes would even improve the performance of your character, making the game a literal pay-to-win experience. Now, DICE and EA made numerous claims about how you would always be matched in multiplayer with people of equal skill, but we all know that guarantees don't always match up with reality in multiplayer games, right? In the end, player outrage at having to pay extra just to unlock content that had already been paid for forced EA to back down and remove monetization from the game. But the impact of this debacle went far, far further than anyone had anticipated, as we shall see. Not content with letting EA capture all of the infamy, almost exactly 12 months later Bethesda released Fallout 76 to, well, middling reviews, shall we say. Outsourced to a non-core development team, the game has been plagued with multiplayer issues, exploits, and just plain dull gameplay. But the real scandal took place around mid-November when Fallout 76 customers who had purchased the Power Armor Collector's Edition of the game coming in at $200, found that their collector's edition didn't include an advertised item. In the promotional material for the Power Armor edition, it's clear that the pack of goodies you get includes a canvas bag, notionally to hold your helmet. The rugged, heavy duty looking canvas bag that was advertised looks pretty cool, but as it turns out, it was nothing at all like the bag that was actually shipped with the box of stuff. Instead of a nice canvas duffel bag item, the customers got a cheap, thin nylon bag. Although the first complaints I could find started trickling in around the 13th of November, interest in this bait and switch didn't really build until a Twitter user on the 22nd of November shared an email from Bethesda support in reply to a complaint about the bag. The complaint was the bag was substantially different from what was advertised, and the customer support reply was pretty simple. We are sorry you aren't happy with the bag, the bag shown in the media was a prototype and too expensive to make. We aren't planning on doing anything about it. This story exploded on Reddit on the 29th of November in a massively upvoted post, where user Fethenor combined pictures of the promotional material, the bag as delivered, and the reply from Bethesda customer service. Bethesda were eventually pushed a reply to all the upset customers and managed to drop into a thread and complain that the support response was incorrect and the real reason the bag had to be switched for a nylon one was because of, and I quote, the unavailability of materials. This hugely downvoted response only further enraged the Fallout community as, last anyone checked, the world doesn't currently have a canvas shortage. Seeing the scandal blow up, Bethesda did offer upset customers about $5 worth of in-game currency to recompense for the bait and switch, but this only served to make customers even more angry. Some noticed that the 500 atoms on offer weren't even enough to buy a character skin of a postman carrying a canvas bag. Many customers demanded that they get the bag that they paid for, or a full refund. But why did Bethesda offer $5? This seems like a small amount for the anger they generated among fans. But here's the thing, Bethesda clearly thought they were being generous because $5 is actually a couple of dollars more than what a canvas bag costs to manufacture. I know other people have had quotes for bags, but I went ahead and checked myself. I contacted some bag manufacturers in China and asked for some exact copies of the Fallout 76 canvas bag, as well as how much the same bag in nylon would cost. 
for 500 units, which I think is perhaps well below what was the number of collector's editions sold. I got quotes of around about $3.70 per unit for the canvas bags compared to $2.85 for the cheaper nylon bag. Another company quoted me $6.70 for canvas material and $6 for nylon material. Based on quotes that I've seen on manufacturer websites for bags of a similar style, that range seems sensible for me. Now that doesn't include of course shipping costs from China and it doesn't include the handling costs for getting such a bag into people's collector's editions and all of those little extras that go with buying and shipping goods from overseas. However, we're not talking about a lot of money here. Of course, it is possible that Bethesda were dealing with a company in China that quoted for canvas bags and then delivered either really poor quality work too close to the deadline, or perhaps the bags got very expensive when Bethesda started seeing samples and realized the quality of material wasn't up to scratch. It's possible that the nylon bags were a bit of a rush order faced with the complexities of outsourcing to China. These things do happen. But in the end, Bethesda did decide that they could treat their best and most dedicated fans poorly for around the cost of about $2 difference in bag price. Bearing in mind these customers had paid $200 for the collector's edition. What's even more galling is that it turns out Bethesda did get canvas bags made. They just handed them to influencers in the run up to launch, not paying customers. These bags, or bags very like these bags, were also available on several Chinese manufacturer stores. It's fair to say that Bethesda fans were not impressed to see that Bethesda cared far more about making rubbish YouTubers like me happy than people who'd actually given them money. On the 4th of December, Bethesda finally caved to public pressure and announced that they would provide canvas bags, like those they'd advertised, to all Power Armor Edition customers. It was inevitable that they would cave for publicity reasons alone, let alone legal reasons. But amazing that they'd wait so long to do what was clearly the right thing, and all for only a few dollars per customer. Based on Fallout 76's rocky launch, one would think they would look for all the goodwill they could possibly get. But when a company is willing to completely misrepresent a product to customers twice in a month, it's perhaps no great surprise that they didn't really seem to care that much about fixing the problems that popped up in their collector's edition until the weight of PR pressure built up to such an enormous degree. So who has shown the worst disdain for customers, EA or Bethesda? Let's talk about the impact of the decisions these two companies took. One of the interesting things about the EA loot box scandal is that it became so heated because the mainstream press got word of it, and then lawmakers. Over the past year, a number of governments and regulatory bodies have initiated reviews as to whether the kinds of loot boxes found in Star Wars Battlefield 2 count as gambling. Noting it's the randomized and valuable reward type of loot box we're talking about here. Many governments are now saying that yes, loot boxes do count as gambling and encourage gambling-like behaviors and should be regulated. The EA scandal has even spread to games and developers completely unrelated to electronic arts. So while Bethesda's scandal has only had an impact on their own customers, and of course their reputation amongst gamers, electronic arts' scandal has had an impact on all of game development and many other publishers out there. We are far from seeing the final ripples from the Star Wars Battlefield 2 debacle peter out just yet. In fact, just a week ago, the FTC in the US announced that they also would be looking into loot boxes. I'm sure there are a great number of developers out there really, really not too pleased with Electronic Hearts' behavior. But here's the thing. I would kind of like there to be less loot boxes that encourage developers to build pay-to-win systems. So in many ways, EA has done gamers a favor by being so incompetent as to get the attention of regulators, which, if any of you watch Jim Sterling will know, is something he's warned them about for many years. But Bethesda? Well, I've loved their games for decades, and this bag scandal makes me question if they've lost touch with their fans, and if they really understand what they're doing with their development and publishing empire. The greater loss in my mind is Bethesda's. We all knew that EA was a bit rubbish and a little bit money grubby. But Bethesda still held a lot of gamer goodwill in their hands, and they've seemed to throw it away really carelessly. It makes me wonder what else do they no longer care about? Can we trust them? 
to deliver wonderfully crafted experiences or are they going to outsource their bags, their development studios and all their core IP in future to people who seem to care very little about it. So I'm going to call it here. Bethesda's faults are worse than Electronic Arts due to the personal impact many fans of the company and its games are feeling. Good job Bethesda. EA set the bar extremely low last year and you still managed to trip over it just 12 months later. Do you agree with me? Let me know in the comments below. This has been a Tiny Pirate vs. The World. Thanks for watching.